Hi everyone, welcome to Let's Celebrate TV Live. I'm your host, Peter Lee. With me, as always, is my uh, IT guy, my director, my producer, my cameraman, Phil Gordimer. And little disclaimer, first I hope you can hear us okay. And if you can, go into chat and log in and say hi, let us know where you are. The other thing is, we're outside in our little mountain hideaway, so there's going to be some extra noises, a vehicle going by, maybe some construction, the birds, but we'll get through it all. Say, say hi to everyone, dear. I will. Okay, good there morning, he is. Good morning, good evening, good night, Something. and wherever you are watching us, either live or on replay tomorrow. So we have a small studio audience with us today, so I thought I'd mix us all little screwdriver it's still time enough for a screwdriver so here we go I will ask one of you boys to take two of these over please come over here and one for my little bear all right so cheers hmm. That's nice. So cheers, gentlemen. So today we're going to do a little a little different. I didn't feel like talking and lecturing and, and having a topic. I felt like cooking. So that's why today's episode is called Porkalicious. And we're going to be cooking a lot of pork today. So let's get this show on the road. I have here... This is a loin of pork, uh, a full loin. You can see how big it is. And you can get these in a lot of places. I love them because they're really inexpensive and you can get a lot of meals out of it. You can get roasts and chops out of them. Sometimes they come with the bone on them. Sometimes like this, they're boneless. And this is what I usually get. Um, let's get cooking though. How much do they cost and where are you getting them from? Well, I get them from my local warehouse store. They're usually about $1.88 a pound. Uh, so this guy cost me about $17.50. So considering we will get at least three meals, I think that's pretty cheap. And Melissa is saying hi. Hi, Melissa. Always good to see you. Thank you for coming into chat. And Suzanne from the <laughs> me. Florida Space Coast. <gasps> wow, that's awesome. Hi, Suzanne. All righty. I'm going to break this down a little bit first. I have knives. Sharp knife. Always want a sharp knife. And remember, pinch and grip. I'm going to cut it first into a couple of roasts. So this is the there's one in this little wider that I will eventually make into chops. We have this nice center section and then the tail end. So I'm going to go about here. There's one. We'll put that aside. And then we'll cut this one here, right in half. Now we have three roasts of different sizes. I'm going to start with the center section because it's pretty uniform in size around, so that means things will cook the same. I'm just going to cut this into a few chops, as many as I can get. I like to lightly score the top. There's this nice little fat cap. Keep this on because this is a very lean cut of pork and, and the fat is flavor. I know in other parts of the world they get big fat caps, but here in America this is about all we get. So let's see. That looks about good. Just kind of eyeball. Try and get them even. And then look, I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight chops out of this little roast. And you just cut down. Try and keep your knife straight. And you'll get the hang of it. It's pretty simple. But this is such a great, inexpensive way to fill your freezer. And then, of course, what you do with these pork chops and these pork roasts is entirely up to your imagination. 
So this $17 piece of meat will actually yield about $50 worth of meat yep. once we cut it yep. into roasts and right. pork chops. You can go, you probably do, to your butcher section in your supermarket and you buy the package of pre-cut uh, pork chops and they're probably a lot more expensive than this and doing it yourself. And that was no effort. From Carolyn, the question, what is the difference between this pork loin and a pork tenderloin? That's a good question. This is the whole loin. It's a much larger piece of meat. It's one big muscle. It comes from near the rib cages. So then when, when you have the bone on it, those are the rib chops. Um, the tenderloin is from a different part. It's a much smaller muscle. It's from a different part of the animal. You see them in the stores cryovact a lot. A lot of times they're pre-seasoned. Uh, and the big difference is how you cook them. The little tenderloin is very, very tender, and you want to cook it fast on higher heat. This type of, uh, this muscle rather is slower cooking on the grill, roasting in the oven, bread it and frying like we're going to do today. Let's put these aside. These pretty little chops. Now I'm trying to keep everything nice and sanitary. We'll change boards out later when we need to, but I'm keeping all my pork here on this tray so we don't get any nonsense around. All right, so what are we starting with? We're going to start with a roulade, or actually a roulade in. Um, this is kind of a recipe I'm making up on the fly. I kind of had a concept, so we'll see how this turns out. What we're going to do, I'm going to take one of these, this guy, I'm going to cut a little thicker than normal chop. Just like that. And we put it down flat. And I'm going to give it a little butterfly. Very carefully. You don't want to cut all the way through. But we're just going to butterfly it open. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right. Now, it feels pretty even. I'm going to pound this out. I'm going to put it in this bag because I don't want things, any chance of things splattering around. I wouldn't want raw pork in my cocktail, for example. And let me rinse my hands. Since I was touching raw pork. All right, my handy dandy mallet. I'm going to use the flat side. You don't need the flat, this, just this side. We're going to pound this out into a cutlet. So it's going to be a little loud. Let's see how this goes. That's pretty fun. A little more. All right. That feels good. So now you can see, even through the bag, I have this nice, wide, even, it's pretty thin cutlet. I'm gonna put this aside for just a moment. I'll put this over here with the rest of the pork. I'm gonna get rid of this. And look, I have a brand new board. If you didn't have two boards, you could always just flip it over. So here we go. I'm going to bring my little burner over and a pan because we want to stuff this. So here we go. I'm going to make an apple and cranberry stuffing. If my burner will light. There we go. Now because we're cooking on the fly today, we won't have the conversions for English and metric. Right. So once the show's over for tomorrow morning, in the show notes, we'll have all the exact measurements for, for everything we use today. As close as we can get them anyway. In my pan, a nice knob of butter. Probably a tablespoon. Why butter instead of olive oil? I have butter here. It's going to taste bad. good. Good. Why not butter? Now here's a good question. 
cut on your own from Packers Loin, what do you do with the slim end? Is it too small for chops or loins? Uh, no, you know, this other end, I'm going to cook this as a roast. And there goes the car. We're actually a big truck. I might trim that off a little bit, depending on how many I need for, but I just cook it. I usually will just leave that on the roast and not bother with a chop. Didn't you roll it back and tie it like we would do with a tenderloin? Uh, you probably could, but these are, unlike beef tenderloins, these that really taper off, this isn't that, that thin. All right, I'm gonna put in some apples. This is one Granny Smith apple, and I have it covered to keep the bees away. I just peeled it and diced it right in. Give this a little stir. This is on there, say, medium heat, medium high. I want to get these vegetables cooking a bit because this little guy will not take long to cook. Even though I'm probably going to finish them in the oven, it's still, I want this stuff to cook down and, and otherwise you'll go to cut into this and then you have all this raw, crunchy vegetables inside. So I don't mean to be a bu buzzkill, but we should turn the oven on. Just here. Just saying. Fine. God, you want everything. <laughs> yes, dear. I was getting to that, but that's all right. I'm gonna put in some red onion. That's about half of a red onion that's finely diced. Again, this is all on the fly. I haven't really measured anything, but we'll figure it out. Now that smells good. The onion and the apple. Have a little more flavor. I've got some fresh rosemary, probably about a teaspoon, and I'm definitely using fresh. Always use fresh. Um, but I want a little bit in here. And I'm going to put it in now because, I, again, I want that to soften and kind of disappear into the stuffing. I don't want anyone eating chewing on a little like, pine needle type of piece of rosemary. And we're just going to let this go. You've been trying to grow rosemary up here, and it just doesn't seem to work. No. Her rosemary at home is doing okay. Yeah, comes back every year, but... Some dry cranberries. Why not? Of course, more color and texture. Now I'm going to hit this with some salt and pepper. Because the salt is going to help draw the water out of the apples and the onions. It's going to bring all these flavors together. And a little pepper. Pepper is going to help balance out the salt and the sweetness from the fruit. Now, I know some of you out there are saying, oh, that was an awful lot of salt. It really wasn't. If you salt your ingredients, season each layer. As you're cooking, you will use less or none at the table. All right, this will just take a couple more minutes. I just want these apples to soften a little more. All right, well, while they're going, let's have a question. Let's see what others in the question pool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is true of our family. From Bill, my mother cooked pork to death. Tender was never a word with pork. I think most of our mothers did. You know, they were from that age of, oh, the trichinosis scare, and cook it, cook it, cook it, and yeah. These days, you can cook pork to rare, medium rare. You can eat it if it's a little pink. But even if you prefer it well done, overcooking it, you don't want it dry and crunchy and ugh. Most people do overcook pork, though, which is unfortunate. And along that same lines, there's another one. I love grilled pork chops, but it's so easy to overcook them from Danielle. <laughs> yes, it is, unless you have one of these, their little propenometer, instant read, invest in one. This is the difference. 
and when you know what temperature it is, if you want it to be, when you sit down, if you want it to be 150, you pull it off the grill at 140. Because carryover cooking will take it up to 150 and beyond. Or whatever temperature it is you want it for whatever you're cooking. We generally stop at 125 to finish at 135, so it's slightly pink. All right. I'm going to give this a little taste. For seasoning, I'm going to get a fresh spoon. I know. Good from here. Mm hmm. Perfect. All right. Let's turn that off. I'm going to pop this behind me to cool down. I'm going to move this guy out of the way for just a minute. Right over here. So, let's talk about this guy. Now I'm going to keep this on this bag just so I don't change boards again. So here we go. I have this nice little guy here. Let me wipe my hand since I'm touching it. I'm going to give him a little seasoning, a little salt, and some pepper. Because I want flavor all through it. Okay. Turn this a bit. I'm going to put in just some of the stuffing. You don't need a lot, but you want a nice, a nice amount in here. All right. It's been a while since I've done this, so let's see how it works out. A hush comes over the crowd. I know, right? So we're going to roll this up. We're just going to tuck it in like that. Roll it up. Now, if I had kitchen twine, I would tie this. I could not find kitchen twine to save my life. So we use some toothpicks. Can I get away with one? Yes. Okay. Now I've got this nice little package. Again, we'll just put this here. Clear this off. Now we get to cook it. Let's bring our burner back. Now I always tell you guys, those of you who watch regularly, cooking is all about layers of flavor. I made bacon this morning for breakfast in this big pan and I saved the drippings because I just want to add so much more flavor. So let's get this going. There we go. We're going to get this minute to heat up. While this is heating up, do we have any more questions to look at? There's... The chat's a little slow today. Oh, let come me, on, uh, kids. Let me pop over to chat. No, it's a little quiet. A little quiet. Let's, let's get our Facebook ones in here. Um, okay, here's one from Merrill. Merrill's been a very active commenter in our regular group. From Merrill, I love pork stir fry. Power to the walk. Me too. You guys out there are all for quiet, my studio audience. <laughs> so if you were using sage, where would you put sage in this recipe? I would put it in the stuffing. In the stuffing? Yeah. And actually I had some sage, sage all cut up to do that, but then I just, at the last minute, decided to go with rosemary. You could, I could have used both. That might be a convenient way to say you forgot. <laughs> Who are you again, and why are you in my house? Oh, I forgot. You're my husband. No, it was a last-minute decision. We never change our minds. Never. Never. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. All right. Fun. Fun. No, but actually, I do have a nice little ball stage here. All right, hold but, on. Oh, well. Here's one that just came in. From Sarah, do you prefer your chops cut thin or thick? It depends on my mood. Um, sometimes one nice, thick, meaty pork chop, and I'm fine. But sometimes I do like, I've been buying those little thinner ones lately because we'll eat two or three of them and not feel guilty. I feel like we're, ooh, we're having multiples. 
when we cut them ourselves from a loin, we tend to cut them thick. Yeah. Because we can always change our mind and cut one in half. Yeah. When we buy them, we tend to buy them thin. Mm-hmm. All right. We hit the outside of this with some salt and pepper. I'm going to start this out seam side down. Don't worry if some of your stuffing comes out of the end when you try this, and I hope you will. It happens. All right, let's hit this side. Oh, this is a really good one. Nothing to do with this, but okay. it's a good statement. When you make your cooking videos, do you read from a script and who writes them from Paul? Uh, well, the answer to that is yes and no. A lot of times, most of the time, we use a teleprompter. And the reason we do is so we can give exact measurements. It's difficult to remember U.S. measurements and metric and then the ingredient, what order I'm in. So using a teleprompter the way that we go. So there's no real script, but I have that little reminder. Martha Stewart, I've noticed, on her little cups and things that she uses, you'll see this little label printed that will say like one teaspoon, whatever, which is very clever, uh, but we find the teleprompter is easier. And the teleprompter is just for the ingredients listed. Yeah. There's nothing scripted. Nope. Yeah, we just kind of talk off the fly. Yeah. I want to get this good and brown. Oh, Dixie's in. Oh, awesome. Hi, Dixie. This looks delicious, but not being chicken. Pork never crosses our kitchen door. Could you FedEx that to me now? <laughs> well, Absolutely, Dixie. Anything all, for you We're here. only 20 minutes away. We could just drive it up to you. <laughs> we love Dixie and Phil. Dixie's husband only eats chicken. Only right, let's give this a flip. We can go on this side. Can you uh, see that on the camera, dear? Uh, yep. There we go. Sorry. There it is. Got distracted. Yep. Now, you probably can cook this all in the pan, and you would do several of them. I'm still going to pop it in the oven. How are we on time? Where are we? We're on time. we got half an hour. All right. We'll keep going. Cause... Yep. I got fried pork chops waiting for me. I know. I know. Oh, my lunch. Well, do you want me to cook this in the pan or you want me to put it in the oven? That's what I'm asking you. Put it in the oven. All right. We'll get a brown on all sides first. So, a fun thing about this, you can stuff this with whatever you like. Um, you know, I went the classic route, apples, cranberries, rosemary. But you could do cheeses, you could do bacon or sausage, um, which is just your pork overload, but delicious. Hold on, we actually have a question about that, and we already have an episode ready for it. So, Ooh. here we go. Do you have any recipes for whole pork loins stuffed or marinated? Well, actually, we did a stuffed pork loin episode, and Phil will put the link to it in the chat, uh, where it was pork loin stuffed with sausage, but then I also, we did it three ways. So we took a whole pork loin and did three separate stuffings in it at once. One was sausage, one was spinach, spinach and pepper, and one was cranberry, and I believe goat cheese. Could be. I will put the link in the chat right now. Oh, here it is. Here's the episode. All right. This is nice and brown. Yep. I'm going to pop this into an oven. We'll just let it finish in there. And I'm going to... 325... Not too hot. All right. As I look up, there's more people leaving camp. It's Sunday, so there's cars going by and people waving, hey, bye. 
And I have just left the stuffed pork roast in the comments, and okay. it'll be in the show notes awesome. for tomorrow for playback. Very, very good. What we're going to do next was also an episode, so you can leave the link for that in chat, too. I'm well, that make... was bone-in pork, fried bone-in pork chops. I know, but the concept is the same. So we're going to make breaded fried pork chops. Who doesn't like something breaded and fried, right? I mean... Lunch. Very few people. Very few people. Okay, let me get my breading station going. The fun of cooking live outside. In the noisy campground. In the noisy campground. Yeah. Okay, we're going to bread these. So I have some breadcrumbs. And I have some eggs. This is about four eggs that I just beat up with a fork. Nothing special to them. And then, yes, yeah, stove. Thank you. Uh, just my favorite brand of breadcrumbs that I like to use. So it's simple. Breadcrumbs, pre-seasoned or season it yourself from Kitchen Zero. Okay, that's a good question. I keep all three kinds. I keep in my pantry at home anyway, seasoned unseasoned and I keep panko breadcrumbs around and depending on what I do is depending on what I use them for um, in this case this is seasoned where camp it was just easier to get a little can for this um, but it's one that I like I know the salt level in it I know the flavors so I'm comfortable using it now a lot of times with breading stations they'll do flour egg breadcrumbs I prefer breadcrumbs then egg the more breadcrumbs. And the breadcrumbs just take the place of the flour. And that does a couple things for me. It's one less dish I have to wash, and it gives you an extra layer of crunch. I know. You're supposed to just before I can have wet hand, dry hand. I don't have time for that. <laughs> These are your best kitchen tools. Impeccably clean hands. I know it upsets people. I've gotten lots of comments. You should wear gloves. You can wear gloves in your kitchen. Or if I were working in a restaurant and they said wear gloves, then I would. But at home, I'm not. Now, could you pound those um, chops out? Absolutely. Like the other Absolutely. Absolutely. You could take this, pound it out, and when it comes to that cutlet, if you bread it and fry it, it's schnitzel. Which we thought about doing, but then we realized it's two fried pork chops, and that's kind of boring. So let's make something up. And that's all the more reason to buy and cut your own. Yep. Because then you can cut all different sizes. Mm -hmm. And then just repackage them in Ziploc bags in the freezer. Yeah. And you got months worth of food for 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a Sam's Club or a Costco near you, each age even or... with the high price of food, it's still a dollar seventy five to a dollar eighty a pound. Mm -hmm. So you can get big ones for twenty dollars. Of course, if you don't eat pork, well, I'm sorry. But Dixie, you know, you could make this all these same recipes with chicken breasts, just pound them out flat. I know you know how to make a thousand one chicken recipes. Plus, we just did a chicken recipe, and I think I called you out in it. All right. Good question. Whoops, sorry. All right, I'm going to pull that pan out and put that little roulotte on a rack, and just, that's probably done by now. And while you're doing that, I'll read the question. All right, I can read it. I got it. Uh, is there a difference between bone-in chops versus boneless from a taste standpoint from Merrill? Well, actually, I, I kind of think there is. I don't know so much if it's taste or if it's uh, tenderness and juiciness. I, I prefer bone in, uh, but these are fine, the boneless. A lot of people will say that uh, the bone in chops or bone in steaks are better. But then there are a lot of people that, I, I know two, two people that would not eat any type of meat that's on a bone. Not a chicken wing, 
Not a steak that has a bone in it. Yeah. I didn't even know you were one of them. And now I know three people. Oh, those are your links. Okay. Yeah, I'm just showing everybody the links okay. to the other ones. All right. Okay. That's five chops. That's enough. Let's discard all this. And while he's doing that. Out of the way. Let's do our standard little commercial here. If you'd like us to do a recipe or an episode for you, check out our website at letscelebrate.tv. Hit the contact button and tell us what you'd like to do. A lot of our recipe ideas come from emails that were sent in. Yep. Or you can send us an email at info at, dot, at letscelebrate.tv. Let's just clear the decks here. All right. Mm. All right, this is going to be smoky, but let's see I how smell it goes. pork. Uh-huh. I may transfer it to this little pan, which is probably what I should have done to begin with. Ooh, that's lovely. There we go. Actually... Pretty good. Leave that there so no one touches it, and I'll get myself a new one. Uh-oh, he's off camera. <laughs> okay, let's see Is how... the cook time for a boneless pork chop and a bone-in pork chop different? It depends on how thick they are. A lot of times the bone, they seem to take a little longer because the bone has to heat up too. So... Uh, it depends on how big they are, but if you're not sure, this is the way to go. <laughs> All right, what do I have on here? Oh, 140. So I'm just going to let this sit and rest. Was that luck? Of course it was luck. <laughs> or skill. Let's... Little column A, little column B. Whatever it takes, dear. Whatever it takes. Okay. Let's pull my burner back. Because now it's time to do some frying. Here's my favorite. My cast iron. I've already got the oil in it. So I'd recommend you at home don't carry pans of oil cold or hot. Especially hot, but... In this case, it was necessary. And we're going to get the heat going under it. Now, I've got an inch or so of oil here. and I'm using corn oil today. Um, I like the flavor you get from it better. A lot of people use canola oil or vegetable oil because it's neutral flavor. But I, I like a little extra something you get from corn oil. Hmm, there's a lot about this. What? Since you were doing the pounding ones, uh -huh. about this. Pork Milanese all the way from Greg. Yeah, I think we did a pork Milanese recipe. We did chicken Milanese. I don't think we did pork. Okay, we'll have to look. Well, if we find it, we'll put the link up somewhere. But yes, Milanese is a great way to, to do it. So this is going to take a few minutes to heat, and we're going to want... It to reach like 325, 350, and we'll just check it with our little handy thermometer. And that'll take a bit, so why don't we talk right. about uh, what's coming up on Tuesday? You want to tell them what's coming up on what Tuesday? We're filling up what we're filming tonight. Okay, so I, I love a salad niçoise, and I'm always trying to reinvent it. So I'm making a kind of a strange version of it. It's more of a Use uses salmon and green beans, which are, be, string beans are part of a salad niçoise, but this is a little different. It's going to have a, a Greek yogurt dressing. And it's steamed. So, yeah, the, the salmon will be steamed. So it, it's easy, but it's one of those light dishes that's really filling and elegant looking. And in the next couple weeks, we have some basic skills coming up. Simple things that you don't think about, like how to bake a potato. I made baked potatoes twice this weekend, and I was amazed. We had two different sets of guests with us, and they're like, uh, that's how you bake a potato? 
I put it in microwave. I thought that was the only way to do it. Like, no, there are other ways. So we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to be exploring, too, some different ways to make pestos and some other sauces for our basic skills. Yeah, our basic, we haven't done them in a while, but looking People over, looking over our, our numbers, our basic skills are very popular. In fact, right now, how to slice a mandolin slicer yeah. safely is how approaching 10,000 views. How to use a mandolin slicer safely. Not how but to slice the teeth get in the way. I, I know, can't dear. Go I know, dear. Oh, here's a good one. From Patty. Watch your Marry Me Chicken episode yesterday, making it tonight for a hubby. Excellent. Yeah, that was our last episode, Dixie. And uh, that was a fun recipe. That was something our son sent me ages ago. And people send me recipes. I print them out. And I'll usually keep them in a little pile on my desk. And then I go through them periodically. And that's what happened. And I, before I came up here, I said, what? are we doing what's all these papers here on my desk and i went through and went oh this one looks good but i didn't know where it came from and when the episode came out he, he called me and he said i was wondering when you're going to make that because it was mackenzie yes approved. yeah our, our four-year-old granddaughter loved it so it was you know four-year-old tested and approved so i figured it must be good now that's an interesting recipe because I, I made it very, I, I changed it a little bit, but we're going to be making that a couple more times coming up. I have some ideas for little twists on it. And that's what I like to do. There's only one recipe I do not ever mess with. What? Turn it off. No, I didn't. Okay. No, I didn't. It's at 325. That's what I want. Relax. Calm down. Anyway, as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted. The only recipe I don't mess with is my shortbread recipe. That is, I don't add nuts or chocolate. From AJ, I love frying chops, just not the mess to clean up after. Me too. So if you don't have someone to clean up the mess for you, invest in a splatter card. Now this one I've had for 10 years. It's probably near the end of its life. It's kind of charred on the edges, but this will really help keep the splatter down all right here's another one since you're just about to start frying this from marvin at what point do you decide with fried chops if they need to be finished in the oven i tend to fry them until the coating looks good like it's golden brown and set and then i pop them in a low oven just for paranoia's sake you can Check that your chops, and you should with your thermometer, but especially when you're doing a large quantity and you have to do them in batches, just pop them in a low oven. It's going to keep them warm. If there is any bit that still needs some cooking, that'll finish it off. If you're doing thick chops and you try yeah. to cook especially them thicker in chops. the oil all the time, yeah. the crust will be burned before the center is done. Yeah. So get the crust looking the way you want mm -hmm. and then finish it in the oven. All right, we're almost there. Almost there. This is the only bad thing. We couldn't really preheat this oil. I thought about preheating the oil ahead of time, and then I thought, do I want to be carrying doing this with hot, hot oil? Like, yeah, no, no. And there's the chipmunks. Chip and Dale are very busy today. Yeah. That's one of the challenges. From Captain Chaos. Where do these people get these names? <laughs> I would love to see a behind the scenes of how you make a video. We've talked about that, haven't we? We have, but it's a catch-22. I can't use the equipment to film a behind-the-scenes when we're filming it, so we need help from other people to do that for us. Yeah. Yes, we do. Well, here, I, if you actually... Here, let me put me on. You can kind of see what I got going on over here. So this... Oops, left and right. So this mess here, I'm looking at four cameras and switching them live, and I have a laptop right here that I'm reading the chat that people are typing in Facebook or here. And then there's a third laptop way over here, which does our video and music and all sorts of things. It's a little simpler at home because we're not dealing with the uh, live switching equipment. But we'll do three or four cameras. Today we're using three. Well, you could, in theory, use one of these and take the video and just have the others. Like if you use the third camera, 
and you can just show where it would be and use that to film it and all right we are at 325 and rising so let's fry some That's pork good. chops yeah carefully always place it in away from you oh, lovely bubble bubble yep don't overcrowd your pan and oh. watch your oil level. This has a lot in it, and I'm a little concerned if I put a third in, it's going to make the oil bubble over. Better safe than sorry. Hmm, two chops and five people. There might be a fight for them. Well, guess what? There's three more chops here. It's still to cook, so calm down. Relax. How are we doing on time? We're doing good. We got about 12 more minutes. Okay. Did you have to turn the heat up on the oil because it cools down when you add the chops? Yeah, well, what I'll do is uh, it will, and it'll come back up pretty quickly, but when you go to do the next batch, you want to wait a moment and let it come back up. And if you have to turn the heat up, you can. Cast iron holds heat yeah. a whole lot better. Right. It if you were using an aluminum pan, yes, as soon as you put it in, you'd have to turn it up. Cast iron, you generally don't. Right. It, it doesn't necessarily heat any more evenly, but it retains the heat. When I use, I think every day I've been here for the last 10 days, I've used this pan. We have more cast iron than we know what to do with. That's true. And we have debated doing a basic skills episode about how to maintain and use cast iron but there is such angst out there about cast Crazy. iron. You've got a camp that says you can't ever wash it or clean it or, or do anything with it. And really, you can throw these things in a volcano. You're not going to hurt them. Right. Your um, ceiling and surface that you've been working on for the last five years is not going to wash away. But you have a lot of people, and, and there are well, divided camps. What I always say is... It's not Grandma Hyacinth's antique Royal Dalton with the hand-painted periwinkles. It's cast it's iron. It's cast iron. And that's why when Great Grandma bought it in uh, 1835, you have it today. So these go pretty quickly. Now, see, these are nice and golden brown. I don't believe they're cooked quite through. We'll check them, but it does go. That crust is golden. It's set. Let's turn this guy over. I'm going to check my oil temperature, see where we are. All right, 315, 325, good, we're good. I'm actually going to turn it down a wee bit. And put these last two in carefully. The instant read thermometers are your friend. Yeah. The problem is, the look, the budget ones are just that. The ones like that, the thermal works. They're $100 for a reason. But worth every penny. Worth every penny. All right. Last two are in. Let's see how these guys are doing. Yeah, these need to go in the oven. Would you like a second pan for those coming up? Yes, please. And I'm actually going to turn the oven off a little bit. So then when I probed, it was showing 100 degrees on the inside. So it looks done, but it's not quite there. Hmm. What? We don't have a second rack? No, not for those, not here, at home. That's fine. They can go rackless. Come on now. Oh, Gwen is in. Gwen? Oh, we haven't we seen haven't Gwen seen in a Gwen long time. A long time. Hi, get, Gwen. Let me get back to my uh, chat screen here. Yeah. Gwen is our friend from our other camping group. We all went on a cruise a couple of years ago, and, and, and she's only about this tall, and she's this little bundle of energy, and she just never stops moving. She's so much fun. I think she can drink us under the table. Yeah. <laughs> And Gwen right. Joe is working on a cruise. Yeah. We're taking them whining 
out to Long Island in two weeks, so. But there is another cruise in our future. Speaking of whining, um, what kind of wine would you recommend for what you're cooking? Well, you know, they always say the old rule used to be white with pork and fish and then red with meats. Drink what you like. Uh, if it were me, I would do either a rosé or a dry white wine just because it's a little lighter. Um, the only time I think that rule really applies is with fish because the tannins in red wine bring out the fishy flavor if there is any fishy flavor in it. So that's why they used to say white with fish. If I was picking the wine, it would be a Sauvignon Blanc mm -hmm. because that's a dry white wine. Yep. All right, let's cut the heat on this. And these go right in the oven too. Okay, now I'm not gonna move this. I'm gonna leave this here. I may slide it out of the way, at least carefully. Let's just slide, just the, slide whole. the whole board. Yeah, very carefully, don't do this at home. And then don't be coming back saying, oh, Pete did it on TV. No, don't do it. Okay. We got a pretty plate to put them on? Yes. But I got to clear the decks first. I kind of feel like Julia Child when she did her show. And she but was she constantly wiping down and cleaning up. But I, you didn't drop the, the chops on the floor. I, I didn't. I didn't drink from the wine bottle either. I may later tonight at home. But we don't have bottles of wine here. We only have box wine. And, well, well, yeah. There's a practical there limit. There is a practical limit. Yeah, we have some uh, mostly pretty plates here to put these on. I suppose I should put down a little pretty uh, placemat if we're going there. How are we on time? So I think I, I don't, I can't see a clock anywhere here. At home we have clocks so I can see where we are. 126. We have about five more minutes. Okay. Then let's try our experiment. Let's I'll be brave. Let's cut it open and do a reveal and see what it looks like. Yeah. Let's take out the toothpick. Ooh. If I can. Let me zoom in here. Yeah, hold on. There we go. All right. All right. Are ready? Just a moment. Let me get a steak knife and a fork. And a little napkin so I can daintily wipe my lips. And then for the first time in the history of LCTV, you're doing a testing without a glass of wine. Well, I, I still have some cocktail left. And we don't have any white wine here, so the screwdriver will have to do. All right, I'm just going to cut it in half, and we'll see what happens. Pretty. Look at that. Look that up just a bit. There you go. I can you zoom in it? No, no, you Yep, can't. there we go. All right, there you go. So let's give a little taste. So that's what I do for my audience, the sacrifices I make. <laughs> mm, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Very good. Oops. Yeah, we saw that, too. Yep. It was pretty tender and uh, pretty easy to do. I could make this more often. So now I guess we're going to have to do a whole proper episode on this, aren't we? Do you want to try it? No, I'm okay. trying to see You're who's... You're for, the, for yeah, the fried pork chops. There's also a couple of Facebook messages coming in, but I can't read them. Why can't you read them? Because they have terrible misspellings. Oh. As long as there are no bad words. <laughs> as long as a lot is not spelled as one word. That hurts my soul. <laughs> Speaking as a book okay. editor and a... Yeah, so as a book well, editor for 20 years. manager. Let's check these chops. See how we're doing.
So, get turned off on me. There we go. One twenty. So we're just gonna let them sit and rest for a couple more minutes. That one needs a little bit more time. Oh, this one's way done. Okay. So then we're gonna taste this one. We got a question from uh, okay Carolyn. I had to. Well, I even, even missed the spelling, but that's all right. How long have you been cooking professionally, from Carolyn? Here's a little secret. I don't cook professionally. I did once upon a time, a hundred years ago, for a very short time, and I discovered very early on I did not like the life of being a chef. It was all nights, all weekends, on your feet. Very tough to have a relationship. Um, so I just didn't like it. So we started this show many years later. We did um, catering there for a little while. Yeah, we did do some catering on the side. And that was just more trouble than it was worth. That was way because, too much trouble. You know, you start these things up with your friends and then everyone wants a deal. And, and you know, like, yeah, no. But anyway, we've been doing this show for five years. And what started is because we entertain so much and, and very few people ask us, to their houses because they say we can't do it like you so we started the show to show everyone that yes you can it's very easy and uh, so this is what five years now five years but we didn't produce videos every week until two years ago so but we have 265 videos out yeah. there yeah yeah all right I'm going in. Look at that. Perfectly cooked. There's the tiniest trace of pink, and that's okay. Yay. Definitely okay. Here we go. Mmm. Perfect. Juicy, tender. I love that crunch. And it's fried food, so how can you go wrong? Mm-hmm. That's brilliant. And you know, in the corn oil, I really think it just gives it a better, deeper flavor in the crust. Corn oil went out of fashion for a long time. I never knew why. Delicious. Okay. Any more questions, comments? Nope. How are we on time then? We're just over our hour. All right. So let's wrap this up. Mm-hmm. You want to do your normal? No, you can do it. I don't even know what you normally do. You do it. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm tired. All right. Let me camera. get me on screen. Go here. ahead. All right. So we will see you all on Tuesdays for our regular episodes, Fridays for Cocktail Fridays or Basic Skills, and every other week for a live stream. Mm -hmm. What's um, our next live stream going to be? We have two live streams coming up. You're going to make me look them up now by name, aren't yes, you? Yes, I am. I, I know one is all about Midnight Munchies. Well, Midnight Munchies is August 8th. Okay. And that's about all the bad things that you get at diners at 2 o'clock in the morning, usually when you're drunk. Um, yeah. And then we have one about all about kitchen knives. That's the next one. That's the next okay. one. That'll be fun to do. Yep. Why people spend a whole lot of money for really bad knives. Uh-huh. All right, so until next time, everyone, thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming and chat. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I think my audience and I and my husband are going to devour all of these pork chops and things. So until next time, cheers. And we will be in chat for the next five minutes in case you got any more questions. Otherwise, we'll see you later. Mm -hmm.